Hey folks, so this is going to be a couple of videos on section 7.5 where we are dealing with inverse trig functions. Just a couple of comments. For this first video, I'm going to go through an introduction as well as the basics for each um, of the trig functions. And then in a second video, I'll come back and do some examples. So first video intro with some restrictions, and then the second video will do some examples. All right, so here we go. Um, exactly uh, what is an inverse function? Um, basically, what I like to say is that if you can keep in mind that an inverse is an undo button, um, inverse undoes what the original does. Take a look here at this um, geeky definition. Um, an inverse is the coordinate y, x, whereas the original function is the coordinate x, y. One undoes the other. Now, as far as the notation is concerned, make sure that you don't get this confused. Um, notice that notation here looks like this. It looks as though it is f raised to the negative one power. That is not, 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 not the case. Um, this is not a negative power. Um, it actually reads f inverse of x. And so that um, negative one actually represents the inverse notation. Um, it is not a reciprocal um, that would be caused by a negative power. Now, what exactly, I've already mentioned that um, an inverse is an undo button, but what exactly do we use inverses for? Well, um, the big deal here is that inverses help us to find angles. So if we are missing an angle, an inverse can help us to find that. The very first thing that you need to learn how to do is how to um, rewrite an inverse. So um, we are very used to something like this right here, where we have the sine of some angle is equal to a value. Um, don't get confused with the x's and the y's. I could change those to, to say anything. For instance, I could even say, um, I could use something like y is equal to the sine of theta. Um, and so please don't get, get confused with the x's and the y's. They're just simply variables. So this is what we would call the normal way of writing. This is what we're accustomed to. This is what we have been using, um, the, the notation that we have been using. The undo button looks like the following. So the undo button would say um, y is equal to sine inverse of x. That's how you read that. y is equal to sine inverse of x. Or another way you might see it is y is equal to arc sine of x. Those two are synonymous. They mean the same thing. If I had been using um, the, the y's and thetas like I gave you here, um, this would say up here something like, let me zoom in so I can fit it in, theta is equal to sine inverse of y, or we would say theta is equal to arc sine of y. So um, just understand here that um, that is uh, how we can find our theta. Um, the main thing to understand here is for the sine inverse, you have a restriction. Notice that the restriction has to occur between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Of course, if you're working in degrees, this would be from negative 90 to positive 90. Um, so if I were to draw that uh, in the unit circle concept, what we're looking at here is we're looking at the right side of the circle. We're looking at quadrants one and four. If I were to look at that as a number line, um, quadrant four is back here. I am not using these values from quadrant four between three pi over two and two pi. I'm using the negative values for quadrant four. So just understand everything from negative pi over two to positive pi over two or negative 90 to positive 90. All right, so um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna skip, like I said, the examples. Let's go down to inverse cosine. So again, you are looking at the way to write it. Um, so here's the inverse cosine 
notation of writing it. And then the undo button is something like this. This is what we would consider what's normal for us. The big thing I want to point out here is that our restriction is different. Now our restriction is from zero to pi. If I were to draw that on the unit circle, that's quadrants one and two. Um, if I were to draw it on a number line, let me zoom in here a little bit. Um, if I were to draw it on a number line, we're going to go from zero to pi. Of course, if we were working in degrees, this would be from zero to 180 degrees. Um, and then the, <clears throat> the inverse tangent also has a restriction. Now, this is interesting. The inverse tangent restriction is almost identical to the inverse sine restriction. So again, let me just point out here is the inverse way of writing. Here's the normal way of writing that we've been working with. My restriction is, again, from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. You say, well, what's different? Um, the difference is that I'm not including... Um, I'm not including those end values because if I were to include positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, um, sine over cosine would give me an undefined location. So um, so the difference is that it's still um, quadrants 1 and 4 on the right side of the circle. Um, we're still going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, negative 90 to positive 90. The difference is that we're not including the ending values. That's the only difference there. Um, and then I'd like to um, mention the other three as well. And so I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. Um, notice that for cosecant, um, cosecant inverse, which is going to be closely related to sine inverse, um, notice it's still the right side of the circle. We're still going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Still the right side of the circle. The only difference is that I'm not allowed to include this one value because it would be undefined. But just understand, it's basically the same as my sine inverse and my tangent inverse. Um, when we're looking at secant inverse or arc secant, my restriction looks very similar to my cosine inverse or my arc cosine. And so that's going to be the top half of the circle. Once again, I do have one spot that I'm not allowed to use, and that is going to be at pi over 2 or at 90 degrees because that causes an undefined spot. But essentially, we're using the same two quadrants as we did for arc cosine. And then lastly, for um, cotangent inverse or arc cotangent, my restriction is the top half of the circle again, but once again, I can't include the ending values. So what we have here, if we want to put it um, all in, in a nice tiny nutshell, um, we've got that um, sine inverse, cosecant inverse, and tangent inverse all use quadrants one and four. They use that right side of the circle. So um, the right side of the circle, whereas cosine inverse, secant inverse, and cotangent inverse, these guys all use the top half of the circle. All right, so I'm going to pause the video now, and I'm going to go back and do some examples, so stay tuned.